Was this was this your number three, or are you doing this on the fly again? Nobody would ever know if Rich just cheated and did that. <laughs> Hello, world, and welcome back to Grid Iron Campbell, the only podcast that puts its money where its mouth is. I'm your host, Rich Ryan, and I'm joined by two members of the collective, the disciple, Brett Colson, and the resident moose himself. Mo Nuwara. Donnie is not with us because he was grinding a poker tournament. Can't quit poker, never quitting. Unfortunately, he busted right before record. So the ultimate beat for Donald, who I know it is killing him to not be on this podcast right now, and for him to be felted right before we hit the big red record button is brutal. But What's he he's playing? playing a big, he's playing a big package at the win. WPT is there for like three weeks so i know mo and i have a sweat so hoping that that mr peters can come let's through. not oversell it i'm poor <laughs> i said a sweat that could be one bead that is dripping from your bald forehead that's all you need to have a sweat ring that bell subscribe to the lines us youtube page i went ahead and checked the other show uh beat the opening lines with Mo, Eli, and Nicole was watching that earlier today, and it made me feel very good. Did I blow it, Brett? What, what do you have your hand in your hands? Closing so line, closing buddy. Closing line. How do you? Did I say beat the opening line? <laughs> beat the opening line. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine doing a show about on Wednesday about the look ahead lines. <laughs> That's why it's hashtag the other show. Great stuff this week. Some great Black Friday banter. And, and Mo's two picks made me excited because I was very high on them as well. And the entire collective is high on these two games as well. They are two of the many consensus picks this week uh, for the collective. If you're a listener out there, be sure to subscribe to your podcatcher of choice. And of course, salute to the patrons who are listening live right now and watching us. Video is back up on Discord, patreon.com slash gridirongamble to get in there. You can also get a discount, by the way. We haven't mentioned this on some merch. It is the holiday season. I know there are significant others out there that may be forced to listen to this podcast while their mates enjoy us banter about football. Shopmoneyline.com slash gridirongamble. You can get some swag for your significant other. Ho, ho, ho. And all that jazz. Week 13, 3 1 and 1, a semi, a little bit better than a body blow in week 12. The collective's picking at 56%. Okay? We're doing our damnedest, and positive variance can get us maybe into that 60s. I mean, you need 70 to win. It's outrageous to, to every year. The, the, you need to go three and a half points a week to, to win this contest. So it's all about picking winners and then hoping that variance gets you. I'm very happy with where we're at this season and maybe variance can hit our wind, our wind lift our sails and get us. What do we need? Some extra cash. points. Hash. Is it top it's 3% four points still? a week? <laughs> if these people don't buy us beers and pizzas when we show up into their cities, <laughs> I don't even know what to do. Just, just printing winners. Let's get into the split games, which are a bit difficult this week because we are missing Donnie. And there's going to be a couple where someone's going to have to carry the shield for a duo. And we'll start in Big D, where the Dallas Cowboys are playing host to the Indianapolis Colts. The Cowboys are 10.5 point favorites, I believe, in the contest. I'm seeing 11 in real life, a look ahead of 9. The leader of men, something not Sunday. Not Saturday, Jeff, Jeff Monday. Sunday. Jeff Monday. Jeff Monday. Just just leaves the game with all his timeouts <laughs> instead of figuring it out. The guy's never picked up a controller and played a game of Madden because he just lets the time expire as the Pittsburgh Steelers go into Indy and win on primetime on Monday Night Football. I don't think I've ever heard a pundit be more critical than Troy Aikman was in that game of Matt Ryan. Holy hell. He was going after him. It makes me feel like he's one of those people that are upset that, that Jeff Monday skipped the line. And, uh, I, I could just see, um, gosh, who's the guy on, on Fox, Jimmy Johnson. I could see Jimmy Johnson, just all caps texting Troy Aikman about how ridiculous it is uh, that Jeff Monday got to skip the line. And this is a Cowboys team. Part of it was when, 
he was asking or he was lamenting that they're just checking that they're not throwing the ball down. Have you watched Matt Ryan this year? He can't get it downfield, right. Troy. This is as far as he can throw it. Let the man do his job. He's Cow- doing his best. Cowboys have a massive rest advantage, of course, playing on Thanksgiving as they always do. The Colts coming off of Monday Night Football, and they have that ferocious pass rush, which will be bearing down on the statue esque Matt Ryan. But Mo is not afraid. He's staring in the face of the ugliness and taking the points. And he put the Indianapolis Colts, who I guess an angry horse would make that sound, in his top five. Mo, lead us off with this contest. First of all, tough week. Let me just say that. Tough week, but I do like the Colts, man. I had this on the other side of 10. Look at this Cowboys offense. Yeah, they're moving the ball. Yeah, they're scoring 30 points a week. People are excited about it. Look at these defenses they're playing. The Giants, a disaster. The Vikings, awful. The Packers, mediocre at best. The Bears, as bad as it gets. I mean, this is, they're going to have to face a real defense this week. We saw it with the Eagles when they faced this Colts team. This is going to be a low scoring rock fight. The total is in the low 40s, rightfully so. Okay. This is Cowboys 20, Indianapolis 14, Cashier plus 11s. I mean, what's going on here? Why is this line double digits? The Cowboys offense isn't good. Just because they're scoring 30 a week on these bum teams, they're going to struggle just like the Eagles did. That's what I think is going to happen in this game. And while I'm terrified of Matt Ryan falling into a negative script against the Cowboys, just like I was terrified against the Eagles, week after week when I see this team play, I think they're just a reasonable football team, and I shouldn't expect them to be down 14 points in the first quarter. Okay, this isn't the Texans. So give me the double digits here and just... Are we positive this Colts offense isn't (laughs) near the Texans? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Brett, you were nodding. Well, they're definitely not near Kyle Allen, Texans. I can tell you that much. <laughs> you were nodding. You two have Indy in the middle, creeping up towards your top five. Pile on. I disagree with Mo. I think that this is. A, I think this is a great week. I think there's a lot of cool spots uh, on the board this week, and I think this is one of them because Dallas. Dallas is a very strong team, but to lay more than ten, you have to be able to rip off big plays at a reasonable rate. And I just don't see them doing that against this Colts defense. This has been a, a below average passing offense all year and the most effective pass plays so far this season have been screen passes to tony pollard the god uh so you know could the cowboys force four turnovers against matt ryan and and take one to the house of course uh but turnover worthy plays are baked into this line for sure this just just feels like too many points i had this at nine and a half so i clicked colts because anything north of 10 I, i feel like it's too much i joined Obviously, with those two being on the Colts, I joined the legion of droolers, mouth breathers, who are laying the points with the Cowboys here with very little conviction. However, I just think if you run out the the range of outcomes here, there are a ton of games where Matt Ryan gets to like 120 yards of passing, multiple turnovers, multiple fumbles. And what are the Colts going to do if they get into ultra negative script are they gonna drop back and throw two yard crossers to get back into the game like you need to be throwing the ball downfield if you get behind and i just don't trust this indie offense to do it that being said i didn't have very much conviction in this game let's move to a game where mo has the highest opinion and it is chargers at raiders a game that has been ping-ponging Around the number zero, Chargers were road favorites, and now we're seeing that the Raiders are short favorites. An AFC West tilt mode that the market doesn't necessarily know what it wants to do in this spot, but you know what you want, and you want to take the LA Chargers and Justin Herbert. You're shaking your head. This was actually, even though it's like in the middle of my card, this is at the top of my coin flip tier. So uh, I do have a little bit of a lean to the Chargers. Um, Man. You're t- the Chargers, they're not like three points better than the Raiders. I mean, shouldn't they be minus one here? The Raiders are atrocious. 
the Chargers I mean, are pretty good. A lot of the I, times, a lot of the times we 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 ask ourselves, what's the best unit on the field? Right. That's something that oftentimes one of us will say on this podcast. This is the inverse in that the Raiders defense is going to be the worst unit on the field in this game by a country mile. So I, I did get worried about what if multiple offensive linemen are out for the Chargers? I guess that's what's scaring me here. Corey Lindsley, obviously a monster. Concussion, so you have to be really worried there. Something Pipkins, I, I think he's a starter. <laughs> yes, then, he uh, is. He is now. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Mike... Will we have seen that he does make a difference? I think to this offense, I feel like the Chargers should be minus one here, but we're just talking about dead numbers here. So I guess I'm just like, whatever, top of my coin flip tier. But if if the Chargers were to somehow get closer to, I don't know, if they were like plus two and a half, I guess with two being kind of a better number than one i guess i would start to think about betting the chargers but as it is right now i, I just don't think i would bet on it i, I don't want to see what happens if josh jacobs just <laughs> it's running up the middle it might look like that last play in overtime against the seahawks but i don't know man this is still a much more talented team than the raiders have and obviously just like playing i, I think playing indoors honestly is, is probably good for the chargers and it's it's on the wrong side of zero to me, but it's we're talking about zero here. So it's funny I besmirched the the Raiders defense, but I am with Brett on this in, in taking Las Vegas. And honestly, the only reason why my coin came up Vegas is that I'm respecting the market and this movement. Even though, like Mo said, it's these points are are somewhat worthless. But Brett, it seemed like you had a bit of an opinion there. Looking at your card, it, it can't be too strong. Uh, but you do like Vegas in the spot. I do, and it really comes down to the offensive line injuries for the Chargers. Could be without both Lindsley and Pipkins. Herbert was sacked five times two weeks ago, four times last week. There's just no protection left for this dude. And the only offense they have left right now is dumping off to Austin Eckler, which against the Raiders might work, but he can't cap for that. So there's just way too many injuries for Los Angeles here, so that that's my handicap on this game. If, if Vegas can apply pressure, uh, I know they don't do that very often, but if they can, I don't see them losing enough here. Uh, to be a home dog, so um, yeah, I'll take I'll take the Raiders. Before we Herbert hit, second to last in air yards, dump off city. How I mean, it's all Eckler. This is why is this offense. Well, this is why Eckler's RB one in fantasy, right? He's catching a zillion balls, yeah, and uh, and making good work of it because Eckler is is so good after the catch. Before record, we joked that Mo's pick, which will be coming up later, is one of the two sharp for own good plays of the year. But I think this one is a two sharp for own good special, at least for week 13, and that is the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Plus one, playing host to the Jags. We spoke about beat the closing line, not the opening line, and Eli was touting the Lions on that show. And to me, this is just... Everybody is fawning over Trevor Lawrence and what he did that fourth quarter. But the representative sample of this guy's career is not that. It isn't the guy who shredded the Ravens up and down the field. Okay, It is a quarterback that is inconsistent, that makes mistakes, that makes mistakes in high leverage situations near the end zone. So while everybody falls over themselves to crown Trevor Lawrence and fire bets on this Jags team. Give me the Lions whose passing offense, passing offense, passing offense has been very good since all these guys have gotten healthy and they're not going to get an ounce of resistance from the Jags in this game because the Jags defense is terrible. So if anything, this is more of a leverage spot because just like the previous game, these are worthless points. I mean, this is it's essentially a pick 'em when you're dealing Gabe with lines. Davis, the absolute worst. <laughs> I hate that guy. How bad was <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> oh no. Just Mo a brilliant back foot throw to his fingers for six. <laughs> Mo, you had your head in your hands, but you two have the lines here. You were convinced by Eli. <laughs> I don't know if I was convinced. 
I think this is about I, this is the same as the other game. I, I had this other way. I had Lions minus one. I thought that was a good line. Um, I think that's where it opened. Uh, yeah, I'm not excited to bet this game. <laughs> I'm woo-hoo-hoo. Gabe. He redeemed himself, but <laughs> passing off. I laughed when you said that. I really, I didn't do. You went in a completely different direction than I thought you were going to go there. I was not expecting you to say passing offense and then say. I'm on the Lions, but but you're right. I, I'm I'm with you, and and I said this on the uh, on the beat the closing line. I I just think as good as Trevor Lawrence looked. I don't. You're being a little harsh. He, the, rightfully so. People it was got one excited. Quarter. He looked let's, awesome. Let's relax. He played okay? awesome. He's no Mike White. Okay. <laughs> he was, all, but but it's it's just it's exactly what I said it and what you're saying. It's just it, it, we haven't seen that sort of consistency from him. I don't think we can count on him playing like that the next week or the next quarter or the next throw as good as he played, which is exciting. I mean, it's definitely exciting, but um, yeah, I, I'm not positive. He can just keep doing that. We, we've seen it throughout his career. I, I guess, are we allowed to say that when he's 20 games in, whatever it is throughout his career? What? I mean, it's a factual statement, whatever. Brett, I- Brett, Brett, you're quiet. <laughs> you have to pick up the shield. You must defend the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I'm probably falling for it all over again, but the Jags <laughs> looked pretty spicy last week. I mean, Lawrence was fantastic. This offense is now quietly, dare I say, above league average. I mean, that's what the metrics are saying. So I just think the Jags are better than the Lions. That's all, that's all, that's all there is to it. They're just better. So I'm taking the Jags. Fair enough. We move to a game. That's the Donnie. That's the Donnie. I just think they're better. That's the Donnie. It took over for Donnie. Just a better, just a better team. Let's move to a game where, in recent history, at least in the Brady times, it's been a license to print money, betting on the New Orleans Saints when they ta- take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And once again, this game opens six, and everybody with influential amounts of money pile on New Orleans and bring this line down to where it is in the contest, which is three and a half and I wanted to love the Saints because they continue to match up well this is a Bucks team that should they be laying more than a field goal against any average team in the NFL I'm not sure rule of who looked the worst last week most favorite term the Saints went out and bageled <laughs> They didn't though. Oh, that game. I'm still so They definitely tilted. did not look the worst. Come on. I know, but people <laughs> are going to see a zero. People never saw the game because it was never on red zone. And then when they flicked through their box scores after the game, they're like, oh, the Saints had a zero. That is true. That game. The perception yeah. was that the Saints were the worst team last week. Yeah. So I feel like this is what made me tick it right out of my top five. I feel like I'm going to the well one too many times by, by clicking the Saints against the Bucks, Mo, you're on the other side. Brett, you are too, but Mo has a little bit more conviction. Your boy, Tom Brady, Mo, laying the three and a half against the Saints. What you got? What I got here is, is I, I, I don't think I have much, but I have that. I, I still somewhat believe that the Bucks are a decent team, and I don't believe that the Saints are anymore. This team Why? just because, isn't good. Because Kamara... <laughs> randomly fumbled at the one yard line come on man it's this entire season of this though this is like broncos level except the entire market hates the broncos okay but and if andy dalton threw a birthday party i think more than half the team would go to it it's it's somewhat <laughs> still likes the saints i guess okay but yeah i don't know man the saints i just think are maybe pretty bad. I mean, we have many, many weeks of bad play from the saints. I'm worried about Tristan Wirfs, obviously, but I I was, I completely forgot that this game opened six and a half. I'm going to be honest. I had to double check that. I was like, there's no way this game opened that high. It did. I thought it should be shorter than that. So I'm in between, I'm in between uh, the look ahead line and the current market. So it looks like Penny's going that way too. Oops, I'm not allowed to say that word, am I? Yeah, you are. What was the look ahead? Uh, six and a half. The look ahead was six and a half. Yeah, looks now like, it's look ahead four. six and a half opened six. Wow. 
Man, I it, it's four and three and a half in the contest. So Circa is is predicting even more steam on New Orleans. Why would it move? I guess because six confused. is a stupid line. That's why it's stupid. Aren't the Bucks still decent though? I mean, that was just a hard fought back They're and decent, forth battle but, but against what a decent, solid team on the road. But what decent New NFL Orleans team stinks. is favored by six against another decent NFL team? None. This is just Brady magic. This is just people are going to pile Brady no matter what. That's I don't all. know this if is, the Bucks are good or if the Bucks are decent or if they're bad. Or I don't know if the Saints are terrible or if they're decent. I don't know what either of these two teams are, especially the Bucks. Yeah. So my, yeah. my stubbornness makes me think that they could just roll here because I have I th- like they should be based way better on than what, this. Based on what? What evidence do we they have? They have the great Tampa football Bay? players. But they're old they, and dusty had and hurt. I know. To go up big on the Browns, and they just acted like they didn't need to score another point. And then Jacoby That's what happened last week. Brissett stuck it down their keister. And if Amari Cooper doesn't drop a wide open pass, the Browns win in regulation. Okay? This Bucks team is sorry. I wish we got six. One time. Steelers, Falcons. You know what? The more I looked at this, I, I should have loved the Steelers in this game loved them brett you're you're on the right beat you had them nearing your top five take it away talk about the steelers here yeah the big thing with the steelers is like i've been saying it like kenny pickett's just gonna keep getting better week after week and he's also gonna keep facing terrible defenses week after week they they faced a really tough uh schedule on a lot of good defensive teams to this point. So I don't think we've seen like what Kenny Pickett is really capable of. And we're starting to see now that he's facing some really bad defenses. What this offense can do when you pair it to a defense now that has TJ Watt back. Like I think the Steelers are a decent football team and the Falcons we know are not a good football team, possibly bottom three in the league right now. So they're not bottom three. You stop it right now. They're bad. I don't know. Where did I, don't I have know, them man. in power rankings this week? They're I had a, them pretty a, low. They're a they're a plunging college offense, yeah. and they can't stop a nosebleed. The thing about this game is that these are two teams going in completely different directions, and not like creeping. The Falcons are plummeting, and the Steelers are playing well. And, and getting better. And it, it's almost directly correlated with the health of TJ Watt. And then, yeah, as Brett said, the growth of Kenny Pickett in this offense, trusting these really good receivers. And this just comes down to there's so much more professional pride, I think, in the Steelers. Like, I think there's like Steelers blowouts in the range of outcomes in this game. I think there's a ch- like in that building, I these guys really care about Tomlin getting to a winning record, right? Obviously they're dark horses at, at four and seven to achieve that. But I bet you that's something that Monday through Friday are things that the players and staff are talking about. Let's get to nine and eight. Let's get Tomlin this winning season. And I just don't see that on Atlanta, a team that went into this season purposefully tanking. They had the lowest amount of money spent on their roster, made no effort to improve it. Didn't draft a quarterback, drafted another skill position player to toss this season into the garbage and then pick a quarterback next year. So the, the, the Falcons are on 3-2-1 Cancun watch for the rest of the season. And this, this plunging offense is going to get them into trouble if they get uh, into any negative scripts here. Where were you at on the... You had this very low, but you have to defend the Falcons. You're the, the lone... foot here again, but... <laughs> You guys always, t- you can't lay points with bad. You're laying a points with bad teams on the road. Inconsequential what points. You, what are you guys doing? It's not points. In, it's point. It's point. All right. I don't care. That's it, enough it, for me. I'm the not saying laying it. Plural. The I'm saying not laying is plural. The saying is plural. Don't <laughs> ain't gonna catch me laying laying a point with the Steelers on the road. I don't oh, care who to, they're playing. Sorry to the Falcons. Ka-caw! Have to give them their their due respect. Last split game, Chiefs Bengals. Nobody with a strong opinion here. So we're just going to toss it to Mo, who is the resident chef's fan. And even you, Mo, short of a field goal, you could not click your Kansas City Chiefs in this spot. I see hands on heads. Chalk up another turnover-worthy play. That was a bad throw. For Josh Allen. 
Yikes. Josh Allen to lead the league in INTs plus 2,500 one time? <laughs> He's on his way. You just way. got robbed of one, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Did. That's brutal. Chefs, Mo, give it to us. Well, whatever you do, if you bet the Bengals, definitely don't take the two points because the total's 53. Okay, let's just start there. Just click on money line. Um, I guess here's my question, guys. Do the Chiefs ever circle anything? Dude, so this was the reason why I clicked the Chiefs in coin flip territory, my two of thir- 14. I feel like coming into this season, there were two regular season games that mattered. Well, probably three. Both of the Raiders games, because of what the Raiders did, like idiots circling Arrowhead like a bunch of morons last year. Why would you ever poke the bear when that bear is Patrick LeVon Mahomes the second? Canton Patrick. LeVon Mahomes the second. Congrats on the baby, by the way. Canton, Patrick, I'm going to get this right. Bronze, LeVon Mahomes the third. I set a Google reminder so I can call him out in 22 years when he's quarterbacking for whatever, the London Admirals. The Jets. Never the Jets. The Jets would never be fortunate enough to have the the seed of Mahomes at quarterback. But yeah, isn't this circled the guys that prevented them from getting to the Super Bowl? Isn't this circled? If the Chiefs ever circle a game, it's got to be this one. But do you circle games when you're the best? Isn't circling for the bums of the league? I don't know. Yeah. I I, I don't the know. Chiefs, you know what the Chiefs this are back to? This is a good to? line. This is it's a good been- line. This is what the line should be. The Bengals are a yeah. good team. The Chiefs are on the road against a team that can attack this defense. That being said... Oh man, I just I don't want to get on my soapbox and start ranting, but all the Chiefs had to do to win that game last year was wrap their arms around Joe Burrow's body <laughs> and they just didn't do it. Okay. So if they just do that slash do everything else remotely, this is including all those bum drops in the second half by Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Okay. Even if all of that still happened, if they just wrapped up. Joe Burrow, when men were running free at his body, they would have won the game. But I guess we'll see if they do that. But yeah, I mean, I'm interested in this game. I'm interested in Jamar Chase, uh, what he looks like coming back. Obviously, he is an issue. He, I don't want to give him too much credit for that first game against the Chiefs because he got the benefit of some disgusting calls. Well, Illum, we, we need to see who's on the ref crew for this game. It ain't hockey so. Yeah, where's Donnie? Call Donnie. <sighs> Donnie knows. Should I just call him to ask him who's on the referee? <laughs> There's no way he knows. Donnie loves the Bengals, by the way. Tell the call Donnie, because uh, why? In his top five, I would love to know why. Yeah, I would love to know why. It feels like Chase could have came back last week and didn't to be fresher for this game, which is a little bit disrespectful to the Titans, but let's be honest, who's who's respecting the Titans nowadays? Not this podcast. <laughs> not the, not yeah, and how much money has that cost us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the equity and flames. All right, that is the split game segment. Hang on tight. We'll be right back with the Lone Wolves. Brett and I both have a single lone wolf at the bottom of our top five. And I will let you take it away, Brett, because this is a team that got us a push last week. You laughed when I sent you the fact that you were a lone wolf on this team. Mo is flying backwards hearing that Brett has clicked. Go, Brett, go! Take it away, Brett. You know who is a bottom three team? The Chicago Bears. And possibly even with Justin Fields, they're a bottom three team. And the crazy thing about this game, I think this is a good contest play. uh, Because I think if if Fields does play, you're going to see a lot of people pounce on the Chicago Bears this week. Uh, Rightfully so, because the line is three now. Yes, exactly. Um, And it's in direct response to the announcement that he was a full participant in practice. Because... 
This line was steaming away towards Green Bay. I was kicking myself for not betting Green Bay minus two and a half. I knew that was a dumb line, and then it moved two points. So let me ask you this. What were the books hedging, thinking there was a percentage that Fields would play? Like, what would this line be if we know Fields isn't playing? What's fascinating, holistically, the exercise in examining this line what went into the opener with regards to Rodgers' injury? Right. Leaving that game, Jordan Love closing it out on the road against Philly. The only piece of news we get is Rodgers himself on the Pat McAfee show saying that he's going to play despite missing on Wednesday and then being a limited participant on Thursday. So the bookmaking exercise is not only about will Justin Fields play, it was about what's the status of Aaron Rodgers. And even if Aaron Rodgers plays... That dude has not looked right under center for a couple of weeks now. Rodgers can't be too far off the interception lead. What was that line? That probably like plus 4,000 at least. At least. It might have been 100 to 1. This guy never throws picks. Six a year for 15 years. <laughs> what, does, what does Chicago have left on this roster, though? Like just they, got fields. Fields. they, they got just fields. They got fields. What, what okay. is what is even fields? Like, how do we know how effective he's gonna be? Are they gonna let him take off like he has been all season? Like that I don't know what he's gonna look like. Cause I don't know why they're rushing him back. They have a bye week next week. Why is he playing this week? You're not in a you're not in playoff contention anymore. What are you it doing? It doesn't make sense. And that's why the line moved. I think everyone expected him to sit. Yeah. I think everyone expected him to sit. I'm talking the initial move, obviously, not the second move. Right. I think Everyone was just like, why would they play him? It's the same thing I've been saying for two weeks. They got the information they needed. We know this guy can play. Now put him on ice. Injury, perfect. Let's just lose the rest of our games. But I think this lunatic wants to come back and play, <laughs> wants to lead his teammates, wants to be a leader. I guess I get it, but it's not for the best of the franchise. It's not for the best for him, okay? Because he might accidentally lead them, to, lead them to a win. I know he hasn't done it, but he's led them to a bunch of close losses. And then the second he sat on the bench, they lost by 20 to Mike White, okay? I don't want to be smirch Mike White in front of Rich, but they lost by 20 Better to not. Mike White. Better not be smirch Mike White. It's... Okay, there's better quarterbacks, obviously. We're talking about Justin Fields here. He still has a really tough time processing from the pocket, but there's not many quarterbacks who make more of a difference to their team because of the delta around him, man. It's We're like, also talking about a Packers team that just has consistently shown us how pitiful they are on offense. 23rd in net EPA per play. Zero Net yards for play as a team. Zero. They're bang average. And they're laying four and a half points on the road in pro football. I guess maybe the worst roster in the NFL right now. This is against, right, right there. They might be. Against the team that is one hit away from perhaps having the Peterman at yeah. quarterback. But yeah, Justin one hit away. Fields is running for 150 a week. I mean... He, like he's single handedly raising this offense to competence. I don't he know that makes this a huge version. difference. That's why the line instantly moved a point and a half back. I mean, that just doesn't happen that often with teams like this and a quarterback that, let's be honest, as much as I love Justin Fields, he's not close to being in the top 10 in the league. But the line instantly moved. That's how much weight he carries in this offense. I do get what Brett's saying, though. What is this version of Justin Fields? Thankfully, it's not a leg injury, right? So his mobility uh, won't come into question. But that being said, this is a guy who's who's clearly not watched enough Lamar Jackson take and takes way too many hits and needs to find a way to get to the turf. More doesn't frequently. tackle, though. He'll take a hit, but he doesn't tackle <laughs> yeah, or oh touch doesn't, a defender. Doesn't touch a human when they're laying on the ground. This guy. Come on, man. All right, I guess I'm up next with my my only lone wolf. Oh, no, I have two lone wolves. One of them in my top five. And I don't understand it. After weeks and weeks and weeks of being told that I'm wrong, being told this is a good football team, I finally clicked the commies 
and I'm on an island. You're laughing at me, Brett, but I'm I'm perplexed by this. Because what, this is <laughs> what is left for this, this Giants team. What do you mean? People are coming back. They might have Nobody's most of their offensive back. line back. I mean, their receivers ain't coming back, but Isn't they might have their offensive line. receivers all year. Isn't there all of their offensive line out? The the, the both of the their interior players, both of their guards, DNPs all, all throughout the week? Something Bradison came back. I don't know if he's a starter. Evan Neal, full participant. I think Dory Jackson day. already Something ruled out. Feliciano taking snaps, giving snaps. We've got, we've got this, Mud Bud in the locker room. This with, could be three, maybe four starters back on this O line. I picked Dallas last week because I didn't think this O line could do anything against that Dallas defense, and they didn't. They should have got wrecked. I should have hit my Dallas minus 14, okay? <laughs> but putting my hurt aside, this could look like the Giants that won seven games again. Why You're buying based, the based, Commanders based at on, their absolute peak right now, and the Giants, their stock hasn't been this low all season. What, why are you buying the Commanders they're now? home underdogs to the a line, team that has an moved, atrocious quarterback. The line moved a point and a half. So it's not like it's this monumental move, and nor did it get to three. It, it's still two and a half. I just, I don't know. I, the Giants were complete smoke and mirrors for several weeks. And I know we like to point to Dayball, but like Dayball's not Merlin the Magician, right? You can't just wave a magic wand and win one square games. There's a ton of variance baked into that. And this is a, a commander's team, formerly football team, formerly racial slurs. That's that's getting into form themselves. That is getting healthier on defense, and something high. You know what? You know what the commies are. The commies are the discount Jets, right? They're just a little bit worse than the Jets at everything. And this Giants team stinks. Look at Diggs, the absolute goat. What I miss? Just getting called back. Yeah, that's a very very obvious hold in the backfield, but. Yeah, really f-ing sick throw. Oops, that's Market. a that's a double mark. Listen, I I've been I've been driving the commies train for weeks, and yeah, this team has on? looked solid. But what is this? They can't be laying two and a half on the road against the Giants, a division rival that's really well coached. They're getting healthier. You're buying. This is just a stock play. That's all. That's that's the biggest thing here. You're buying one team at its highest, and you're. Or you're selling one team at its highest, and you're buying the team at its lowest. That that's the most. This is the most obvious play of the week to me. Sixty-five percent of the tickets on the G Men. Nothing stinkier than a public dog. I'm worried. I, Brett, I can't believe it. After selling the commies all season, I know, but you have to sell them awful. at some point. There's always a number, right? You you have well, to yeah, sell them. If they at were some like point. north of three, then yeah, I'd well, sell them. Well, that would them, be insane. Like that would f- actually Heineken is, north of three would be insane. The Giants stink. Third Dude. in adjusted sack rate on the offensive line. I mean, even if these guys do come back, it's not like there's a bunch of all pros that are coming back. Mo didn't even know the guy's name. That's some, just a something coming back to play into it. Dude, I have the Giants like bottom seven in my power rankings. They're this is bad. What I mean. We all really do. They, we know they're bad. But it's, what are they like? The Commanders. What are the Commanders? The, the Commanders aren't league average. They're below average. They're fine. <laughs> they have an atrocious offense. It's bad. Atrocious. <laughs> all right, my next lone wolf. I have no idea how to cap Browns Texans guys. I've not a clue how to cap this game. My gut, and th- again, this is rule of Rich thinks the line should be way too high in the Houston this game. This is the <laughs> game. This is the game I thought Brett was. I thought Brett was Lone Wolf Browns. I thought the I I think the Browns should be like minus ten and a half, just because that's how bad the Texans are. Like Deshaun could come back and be awful. Deshaun Watson, by the way, going to be quarterback of the Cleveland Browns this weekend and be awful. And the Browns could just run straight with Chubb and Hunt and win this game by infinity because those two guys are great and the Browns can can block up front. And the Texans, as Brett says every single week, are the worst tackling team in the league. Professional pride out the door. Uh, Brandon Cook saying that the team had lost 
as soon as they got off the bus, I I can I've never heard a professional athlete say that. I did not see that. That might change my capping. He literally said, "I knew we were gonna lose when we got off the bus." Like that is a statement of pro athlete. Nobody's so. checked out more than that guy right now. And if Deshaun comes back and is I don't know the third best quarterback in football again, then this could be a bloodbath. None of you had conviction on the Texans, right? Am I crazy to think that the Browns... Wow, Brett. Brett, you love the Texans. Of course I do. What in the world is going on? Wouldn't the Browns be better off with Brissett over Deshaun in this spot? Stop it. This spot. What what, what even is Deshaun? The guys have played in two years. Well, that's what I mean. The cap is so difficult. But, I mean, there is part of the range of outcomes where Deshaun is just Deshaun bleeping watson i think that yes it's a non-zero chance but i uh, like you could just be deshaun watson he has not played with these terrifying he hasn't played with this offense yet like i don't know what deshaun is gonna be nobody can know you can't know right how can you have an opinion that's the the most shocking thing is that you have a strong opinion on this game (laughs) i'm not trying to think how many how many and then you've Texans. got the Texans angle. Yeah. How many of these guys even care that Deshaun's on the other <laughs> Not team? Not many. <laughs> oh, I thought about that. 2%? That's like, none yeah. of these players played with Deshaun. Even the coaching staff. How, even the executive staff, now that the, the idiot deacon or whatever has been fired. Like, it's just Bob McNair and probably like five other dudes that are part of the Texans organization the last time Deshaun Watson my my cap is that the market is just organically over not overreacting but they're they're giving way too much credit to Deshaun over Jacoby sure. Brissett. That, how that's my can cap. you do with how good Brissett's it's been? been good. Well because it's it's rule of computers, Mo. When they input the quarterback for the Browns, they have to give a value for it and that value based off of historical data is going to be way better than whatever something brisket is. So just naturally, there's going to be a boost in the line that a guy named Watson is playing quarterback for the Browns. But yeah, what the hell is it going to be? I have, this is a, a Sunday that has a ton of great games. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. This is one of the more fascinating games. And then, yeah, the whole Texans angle as well. Him returning home to play for Cleveland is, I mean, it's nuts. It really is. Well done, Roger. The last lone wolf. Miami and the Dolphins, the greatest football team. Mo, you did that. You took the disciple. <laughs> this is a tough one. I really wanted to love the Dolphins here. Um, did that just really happen? I have, this is amazing stuff. Quarterback sneaking with a 30 second drill on, guys. Belichick really has lost his fastball. Um, got I mean, problem Nick, is Nick he Cole. still throws a pretty mean slider. This game, I wanted to love Miami. I, when I initially saw the look ahead line, four and a half, I think. I thought it was ludicrous. I have Miami right there with the 49ers. I think these teams are basically equal. I mean, I, the Niners have a better roster. Yes, of course. But this is rule of passing offense, man. I mean, the, Jimmy Garoppolo is a mediocre at best quarterback, and the Dolphins have a fantastic passing offense, okay? The only thing that stopped me is Teron Armstead. Slash whatever that something Austin Jackson right tackle. Both whoever tackles. That is. Both then, tackles out. And then what Armstead is, Joey is back. Bosa, Joey Armstead Nick is Bosa back. do to these guys? Armstead is, is back for the Niners? Dude. The other Armstead. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just too scary. I can't bet it, I don't think, but I really wanted to like Miami here quite a bit, but just can't trust backup tackles. Again. Dude, I mean, what? Even he's even allowed to jump off sides and ruin our bets. I mean, what can you do? I absolutely love the San Francisco 49ers in this spot. Tua has not shown us that he can do it, Hashtag when it matters. This is by far his toughest test by a country mile. Okay. He's played one tough defense of late and they were able to muster, what was it? 16 points in prime time against 
the Steelers, a Steelers team that was without TJ Watt. And then you talk about the injuries. It is the perfect swing of Dolphins missing out on offensive pieces to protect Tua and the Niners getting healthier in the pass rush department. On top of all of that, and I'm surprised to see Brett so low on San Francisco, this is going to be an elite leverage play because everybody sees a plus next to the Miami Dolphins. And they're going to say, of course, I'm just going to take the Dolphins. 21% of the tickets on San Francisco right now. I do like the Niners, so me- but it is, like I said earlier, I, there were a lot of spots that I liked this week. Uh, a lot that I liked better than this one. I, Yeah, I. this is his first real test this year. I mean, yeah, the Bills game, but I mean, like, Bills secondary was battered and it was like 150 degrees. Three of the- four. Three of four secondary guys out. Yeah, yeah this like is that, a wasn't fake the, game. that wasn't even the Bills team. So, I, yeah, <laughs> two has got to prove it. Like, this is it. This is his spot. He's got to prove it here. And if he does, if he just stomps on the 49ers, then yeah, I will bow down to his greatness uh, until he comes up here and he gets waxed by the Bills in a couple weeks. So, <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's, and the Niners are just going to have their way. The Niners are going to have their way with this yeah. Dolphins defense. This Dolphins defense sucks. So, Passing offense, passing offense, passing offense doesn't matter when the other team but can't cover the door. People, I'm, I I'm, think I just no. saw. Wait, wait, wait. I think a pro kicker was just short from forty-five. He did. Short? I just witness that, or am I out of my mind? It says short forty-eight, but yeah, that's not that's not good for the old Nick Folk. He's got cool cleats on too. That actually happened. Guy blew it. That's amazing. Can we stop? 48? I think high school kickers can get it that far. <laughs> what are we stopping, Can we Brett? stop seem- dumping on Jimmy G? We dump on him year after year, and all this guy does is lead like a top, he's an average. top five, he's an average. top he's, ten. Pay- fine. but the, He's okay. an average quarterback. But the, the 49ers passing offense is good. It's very good. Well, it's, it's good by design. Yeah. Who cares? It's good. It, but it's not because Jimmy G is good. It's because Jimmy G can play within structure. Jimmy G is just a more handsome Kirk Cousins. That's all that's going on here. And I Tua, think I'd by rather the way, have Kirk Cousins. And by the way, Am I Tua, crazy? Taga, Tua Tagovailoa is just a Hawaiian Kirk Cousins. Ooh. All right? Like, these are just guys. And when they're in structure and someone's calling up plays that are great, they're going to the look great. And the pocket is beautiful. Well, it's not even not the pocket for Miami because he gets the ball out so damn fast because Waddle and Tyreek are just out of this world fast. There's so much speed on this team and the play designs are so well that Tua doesn't even need to think. And the one thing Tua does excel at is throw with anticipation. I'll give him that. But that's also schemed and practiced, right? He's been trained to throw with anticipation. And by the way, it's easy to throw into anticipation when you know it's Waddle and Hill that are going to be beating the brakes off of whomever is defending them. So, yeah, you got to prove it to her. Until then, I love the Niners. We're going to get great leverage. This hasn't even touched four in real life yet. It's minus four in the contest. It's minus three and a half in Circa. Love the leverage. This might be the leverage spot of the week, actually. Yep. I think we haven't even talked about one of the leverage spots of the week. Interesting. But I think we will. Maybe. <laughs> The Lone Wolves, I've got the commies and Browns, kind of the Browns. Brett's got the Packers, loves the Packers in his top five, and Moe's got the Dolphins in the middle of the pack. Strap in, boys and girls. It's time for the card. Donnie led the way last week with a 4-0-1 record, but his top selection was sniped by the collective. So we'll move down to his number two pick, which is a consensus pick. And I don't know if it's the leverage that Mo was referring to, but it is. They could make that sound. Their opponent makes this sound. I'm done teasing it. It's Broncos plus eight and a half on the road against the Baltimore Ravens. I talked about going to the well one too many times and taking the Saints against the Bucks. I feel like 
we're going to the well one too many times, but I'm all for it because I too have the Broncos in my top five. One too many times. The Ravens, what, is, the, are, is the market ever going to correct itself? Or are the Ravens just going to be power ranked by these computers as a top five or six team, lay all these points and playing games with totals in the 30s? And we're just going to be able to click against them every week. Are they going to fix it? What They're throwing scheming pass plays to something Ricard. This offense is pathetic. Somebody Demarcus fix it. Robinson is an important figure in this offense. <laughs> I'm saying that without any exaggeration or irony. Somebody fix it. Mo, you touted this, but you're the lowest on this. You actually moved the Broncos outside of your top five. Is this leverage? I don't know if this no is one's, leverage. No one's picking either side in this game. Yeah, know. you're probably right. I Nobody's going to line up to take the Broncos. Nobody's going to lay eight and a half with the Ravens. Yeah, I don't think so either. But yeah, this is just a game that should look like a rock fight. And it should be Ravens struggling to move the ball. Broncos struggling worse. And then Ravens winning 17 to 10. I just don't know how the Ravens can be laying this many points against a competent defense. And and we've been saying it all year, but the Broncos can at least move the ball. So I just, yeah, this Ravens passing offense stinks. And yeah, the computers love the Ravens. They love it's the unbelievable. Ravens. Unbelievable. Football outsiders think the Ravens are better than the Chiefs <laughs> at football. When the Chiefs would be minus six and a half on neutral. Well, I don't know because the computers keep keep loving the Ravens. I don't know if they would get that. Out. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on here. And I and I don't care what's going on with Russ and the culture around this Broncos team, birthday parties and guys yelling at him. I mean, that's sports. If if you've ever played sports and you've not yelled at somebody, then I don't know. There's no blood coursing in your veins. Yeah, and th- th- like this should be the get right spot for the Ravens after they lost last week. But you cannot lay eight and a half. With Lamar in this run-heavy offense, you just can't do it, especially against a defense with a pulse. Like they can try and get chunks on the ground all they want, and maybe they will have success. But you can't. Like, good luck covering the number doing that. And even with everything we've seen with you know with the Broncos' offense and Nathaniel Hackett, I still think this team is slightly undervalued by the market. So yeah, this is just hold your nose and toss them into your top five. And I think uh, three of us did that, almost four of us. So I, I love this side. Mo, I was shocked to not see them in your top five. <laughs> it's in a, it's in a tier next to the next pick above it, and those two are my leverage tier. Let's go to Brett, who had for me the most shocking pick of the week. After leading me to water, I get there and it's a, an oasis, and Brett's pulled the the carpet from under me because he, yeah, this week time. he selected a home dog, the New York Giants. We're back on the Giants. It's time. Unbelievable. It's time the to guy buy the, the Giants. The old, the old bait and switch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're a week too late. Catch up, Rich. <laughs> Let's go, Giants. I'm over here, Brett's I got my... playing chess. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> playing. I don't even know if I'm up to checkers yet. You're moving the abacus with Theo. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Um, So my top pick was sniped by Donnie. My second pick was sniped by The Collective. So, we got the leverage spot of the week then, guys. We got the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> was, this, was this your number three, or are you doing this on the fly again? No, this is my number okay. three. My number I just, four. That just, you just registered me. Nobody would ever know if Rich just cheated and did that. <laughs> <laughs> we need like That's a right. fifth party. We need him to like send his picks Mickey. to Yan. Yeah, we need Mickey, Mickey in here or something. So, yeah. one of them can just like verify this. Yep. I'm looking, I have, this is one Google sheet that I'm the only one who has access to, but that's mainly because I don't want the show to be spoiled because I think it's better when it's organic. Well, Mickey won't won't accept a spoiler, so you have to send it to you. That's right. Mickey has his his ritual. Mickey is listening to this Saturday night, probably enjoying some ice cream, setting his DFS lineups. Shouts to the goat, Mickey Doft. Mo, bring up the rear. Another consensus pick. The stinkiest pick of the week. The two sharp for own good special of the millennium. What this is the stinkiest pick. This is like when I drove back from Wisconsin uh, like six months ago and I stopped at a cheese place, a big dairy mill. 
something cheese. You just 25 at people cheese. out the door? Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, or I'd shout them out. I texted my buddy. I said, what kind of cheese do you want me to bring back? He said, the stinkiest cheese you can find. That's what he told me. So I did. I bought the 20 year aged cheddar. That's what I bought. This is the stinkiest cheese of the week. Look at the Rams. Long winded way of saying it's the Rams. Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be the Rams. Oh my God. Something Perkins QB1. We're in there. Sorry, ODB. Yeah, the stinkiest cheese of the week. Listen, okay, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Bad quarterback walked into Arrowhead. He was a 15-point dog. What, what, are we surprised he threw for 100 yards? Not really, okay? Not really. What if he moves the ball on this atrocious Seahawks defense? They stink, okay? They had a couple good weeks. They stink. They stunk before that, and they stunk since. The Seahawks are awful on defense. They are awful, okay? And this is professional pride of a good defense. I know Aaron Donald's out. Trust me, but this is NBA Rule of superstar star. out. Yep, they're coming that. out. <laughs> we can stop somebody without Aaron Donald. This is the professional pride game. This is Bryce Perkins. Maybe he's awful. He's very likely awful. But listen, I watched a lot of that Chiefs game. I think it can be coached out. The stupid stuff he was doing. Okay. Every play he thought he was in college and he could just take off and run. Okay. Now he realizes NFL linebackers are going to catch you, buddy. You got about three yards and they're going to catch you. This ain't Virginia. This ain't who's a bad defense. North Carolina in the ACC. <laughs> you can't just run 30 yards every time you break pocket. It's not going to happen. I think they can calm him down. Maybe put a few concepts in there since he clearly wants to run. McVay, you're a bum. You can't <laughs> cover this game, then you're a bum. Let's see it, buddy. Get Bryce Perkins some yards. I think you can do it. The Seahawks Bryce, are awful. Bryce Perkins QB1, Kyron Williams RB1, Van Jefferson W. Yeah, does the NBA rule apply when all of your superstars or, or all of your pros aren't, aren't on the roster anymore? At home, they were outside in Arrowhead. They might well, that I, no, that I have to pause you on. Well, this they, is not outside at home. This in is, Arrowhead with a bad know, quarterback. This is different. He might get a know, first down. This is he on might. neutral, though. This is this not is a Seattle home game. Might. <laughs> Brett, you had the stat of the week in the Discord when you went back and looked at the preseason look-ahead line. What is the difference between the preseason look-ahead line and the current line in this game? I've never seen anything like it. The <laughs> preseason number on this game was Rams minus 9.5. And it Rio and it opened this week at Rams plus eight, a 17 and a half point difference. That is madness. Well, to be fair, what's the delta between your uh, week one Rams power ranking and your week 13 Rams? Power? I think mine might be 25. I think mine's it's close, like four to 29. You were that high in the Rams. You hated the Rams. You I still had the them Rams. like six yeah. at least, I think. I mean, how could you not? I, I didn't. I didn't like the Rams, but who did I like? Yeah. I like the Chiefs and the Bills. That's who I liked. All right. We turn to the collective machine. If you don't know by now. The collective chooses the New York Jets. <laughs> Better in net EPA per play. Better in that net might yards be underselling per play. it a little. Just better. Better in total DVOA. I want to say it. This line is stupid. If 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 Mike White is an average quarterback, what if he's just a below average quarterback? That's fine. I think. I think it's fine if he's below average. If he's an average quarterback, this line is stupid. Okay? For how bad this Viking secondary is. And how insanely talented Garrett Wilson is. And how good Elijah Moore is when someone who can throw an oblong object is under center. 
if there's a world where, where Mike White is actually good, the Jets should be favored in this game. The problem is it's more likely that Mike White is really bad, I think. But we we on, haven't but, seen enough But of based him. on, well, that's what I'm saying is what we've seen, we've seen three really good games and one horrific game against the number one defense in the league on the road. And give Mike White some credit, okay? After throwing multiple interceptions, he could have just put his tail between his legs thrown some check downs, went back to the sideline, put his winter coat on, sat on the heater. But no, Mike White kept going for it. He kept putting his foot back and letting it rip. I actually love that. What if Mike White's good? What if he's Tom Brady? Which is the, which is the <laughs> NBA player that said, uh, I can't remember the quote. Exactly. I'd rather go 0 of 25 than... O of nine, because if I shooters, if I went shooter, O of shooter. nine. That means I lost my con. I think it was Dion Waiters. <laughs> oh, that's not. Yeah, shooters. that was Waiters for sure. That is a a very Dion quote. Shoot or shoot, man. What if he's Gannon? What if he's Warner? I gotta believe, guys. This Jets team is seven and four, with seven games from a quarterback who is one of the worst players of all time to play the position. Like. I don't know what to say, guys. The data's there. He's just, he was just that bad. And they were 7-4. and four. Like, I have talk the me Jets the ahead of the Vikings you guys in my love power the rankings. So. Yeah, what do you want us to yeah. say? Like, I mean, <laughs> We all love the Jets this week. Uh, Insane. It, what, the Vikings are 30th in net yards per play. Rich, what did you cap this at? Um, Don't say pick. Good question. No, no, no. Okay. I think I had Vikings I, when I, minus two for me. So way the the way I I guess what I think the market is going to be, and I believe I put three and a half. I thought that they were going to give the Vikings a little bit more credit, and this is another thing where it did in the in the prior week. Is this going to be a leverage spot? Are people going to say? Because I've heard this on several occasions non-betting podcasts, more sports-oriented podcasts where they talk about this game and they'd be like, you know the line's only three? You know Mike White's only getting three points? It might be leverage. Which is, that would be insane. It honestly would be insane. I can't wait to see it on Saturday. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see what people do with the Vikings here. This could be a classic both teams top five. Where? I don't think it will be. I, I, I think 8 to 10-ish, and I, I think about even. I do. I also have to mention our good friend, the great Gatino, DM'd me. We have a friendly wager on this game. If the Vikings win, I will send him a Gridiron Gamble t-shirt. If the Jets win, he's got to get me something from, something from the Jets store. So Ooh. I might get a Theo a onesie. Or at least a a shirt shorts combo for the kiddo. Can we real quick talk about the game that I thought was maybe the leverage spot of the week that we haven't touched on? One Isn't last game. Everyone one on last the Titans consensus pick. I don't think so now that the line is coming down. I think the whole world at the opener was six was on Tennessee, but I think as that value comes out of the number, I think fewer people will be on Tennessee. But I'm right there with you. I had one note on this game. And I said this to you guys. You guys were so concerned about this Eagles rush defense. I said, all you got to do is bring in a couple fat guys. Make sure they're still eating an absorbent amount of food and stick them in the middle. And since bringing in Linval Joseph. Just make up a word. What was that word you said? Exorbitant? What, oh, what, I thought you said absorbent. I was so no, no, confused. No, no. Anyways, keep going. Sorry. Thank you. This is like a epitome. Everybody out there has a word that they've seen in writing, but have never said or heard out loud. And for me, that was epitome because I thought it was epitome. <laughs> Ever since bringing in Linval Joseph and Indomitian Sue, the Philadelphia Eagles are 10th in rush defense EPA, guys. They brought in two fat guys. And the two fat guys are being fat and stopping the middle of the field. 
and containing the run. Don't just think King Henry can just run for 200, all right? This is not repeatable, although it's guess it's been repeatable for damn near six years. Yeah, but there's half the games he runs for 45. Yeah, what do you have, 28 yards this last game? Yeah, obviously the big screenplay, but on the ground, he was definitely contained by Cincy. Yeah, I, I love the Eagles. I had the Eagles right in the middle, but, I mean, they could have definitely easily been in my top five. I was stunned to see the ticket count on this one stunned. Yeah, it's it's crazy, right? It's but again, this this is rule of this is Brett's rule of how much can we trust these numbers because and how there's did, a large uh, what did they bet it at and will they exactly. take four and a half, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Brett, what do you got here? You've been quiet on this Titans Eagles game. I hate the Titans. <laughs> we all do. But and just like the other team that we discussed that we all hate is it the Titans? They just always kick us in the nuts with our record fading the Titans. I, I actually, I want to know what my record is betting the Titans or uh, taking the <laughs> Titans in Titans games this year. It's got to be in Titans games. It has to be awful. Well, we're here. We're at the hour mark, so people can deal with it as I navigate over to Brett. Stats. You know what? This it is actually just extends season. extends back a couple years too. I've hated this team for years. Five and six this season. Really? Let's go to all time. All time is not fully. Gabe Davis is an idiot. <laughs> he's not only an <laughs> awful <laughs> receiver, but he's an idiot. Uh, what do you do now? He blocked someone in the back. He's just staring at someone's numbers and he pushed them. He's an idiot. <laughs> Titans all time. Brett, you sandbagged us. 57% all time in Titans games. I must have been really good early on with the Titans then, because I feel like the last few years I'm just always on the wrong side because I'm always fading them. Six, 62, 46, and one. Wow. Just the Vrabel whisper over there. I guess. <laughs> That's surprising. Your, your weakest team while we're here, the Browns, 44% in games featuring the Cleveland Browns. He was the Mike Malarkey whisper. What was that? <laughs> yeah. M&M's for Browns. M&M's for Browns. M&M minis. <laughs> Oh man. For for a short period there to start the collective, all we did was take the Browns plus 14 every week, and we just didn't realize that it was never gonna come home. Every week. We're like, why isn't this work? Why aren't the 0 16 Browns covering for us? Can somebody fix it? Nobody fixed it. And then it was the Dolphins one year, and that <laughs> never worked either. Yeah. We just, yeah. <laughs> we just did not set the lines high enough. So the card, the collective has Gangry and the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. It was Mo's first pick. It was Donnie's first pick. It was my second pick. And it was Brett's third pick. I've got the Niners, my third pick, because I was sniped twice. Brett's got the G-Men, plus two and a half at home. DP's got the Broncos, plus eight and a half on the road against the Ravens. And Mo has Bryce Perkins and the Los Angeles Rams, plus seven at home against the the Seahawks. Follow these guys on Twitter at Brett Colson, C O L L S O N, and at Mo Nuara, N U W W A R A H. Follow Donnie underscore Peters as well. I'm at Rich T. Ryan. Enjoy the football this weekend. Let's go, Bills. Bills make me want to shout. Until then, peace. <laughs>